Good morning, David here at Earthworks Garden Center to show you the tools necessary how to go about trimming recently transplanted palms and palms that have fronds that are at the end of their life cycle where they turn yellow and brown. So first off, I'm going to go over tools. As you notice, I have a bottle of rubbing alcohol and also a bottle of Clorox bleach. Reason being, uh, in live organisms, plants and trees, there are bacteria, fungi, and viruses that do exist in the environment and can transfer from tree to tree and uh, infect a palm. So what I want to show you for the smaller palms, we have a what this is called a hand pruner to cut thinner, smaller leaves and fronds on palms. And then I have a, uh, this is called a lopping shear ratchet. It opens real wide to get uh, across the spread of the petiole from left to right to get a nice clean cut. And then larger palms that you cannot reach by standing on the ground with a handheld pruner or lopper. Uh, this is a telescopic pole saw. They also make these uh, motorized. Uh, uh, steel is a good company brand. Uh, also very important to sanitize your tools. So I can show you. I measured it from the ground with my reach about eight feet plus the pole so I can get about 21 to 22 feet up in the air. I just wanted to show you how high that is so you don't have to worry about uh, a ladder with this or hiring a tree trimming company that uses tree climbing spikes which is a big no-no if you ever have someone show up that you've hired to trim your palm trees with a uh, tree spikes when they climb up the tree that's a big no-no all that does is create a permanent wound in the trunk and that can lead to pathogens and pests being attracted to it and can lead to the demise and eventually the decline and death of your palm so I do not recommend uh, hiring a palm or tree trimming company that uses spikes recommend a ladder or a, uh, a bucket truck where they can reach drive up and then they have a telescopic bucket okay I'll bring all these over so I'll go ahead and clean my tools off here a little alcohol on the hand pruners there we go sanitize them by the way there is a leaf hopper that is the vector for lethal bronzing which formerly was called Texas Phoenix Palm Decline. It was first observed in the port of Tampa in 2005. Uh, you've got the Phoenix Sylvestris, Phoenix Robolini, Phoenix Canariensis. That genus is susceptible uh, and it, it, it's a type of leaf hopper. It's not the actual leaf hopper itself that carries the virus. Uh, but it's, it transmits it and it goes from tree to tree and you may not see symptoms for up to a year so also Ganoderma and Fusarium wilt uh, can be transferred from a landscape company or tree trimming company that trims an affected tree in say your neighbor's yard or somewhere else in close proximity then they bring their tools to your place and trim your unaffect, unaffected uh, tree and the tissue and liquids that was on the affected tree is now transferred to yours so that's why I don't know how difficult that would be to request the uh, maintenance and tree trim trimming companies that you hire at your property to sanitize and clean their tools it may be hard but I definitely recommend that so very important and then we'll use bleach on this one and then I'll use bleach on the uh, large pole saw not that it really makes a difference, but it's just very important. And whenever you loan out a saw or tool to uh, a neighbor or friend, I recommend you sanitize before and, and after. All right, that should be good. We'll let that dry for a few minutes. Better off to be safe than sorry. Okay, I'll, first I'll go over to this uh, Phoenix Robolini over here. Uh, otherwise known as a pygmy day palm. Now two different situations you have a palm that's been planted for one plus years many years five ten years and each frond you know has a life cycle from start to end and as a palm grows uh, starts off as one leaf 
starts growing and then it develops its leaves and then as the new leaves grow up the top the older ones reach a certain time where it's the, uh, the end of their life and they're ready to turn yellow and then brown so I just want to show you so this would be a perfect example of the leaf base and petiole being small enough to use a hand pruner so what you want to do is always cut with the blade up and this this is your support and it just cuts I always rule of thumb I cut below the last set of spines uh, on the Robolini so if you're down there weeding or whatever trimming uh, there's no excess remaining spines on there from previous trimmed fronds so I go right like that and you don't want to cut it too tight you want to leave about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch from the trunk because the higher you get the more tender the palm is because this is the apical Mary stem up here and uh, you don't want to manipulate and cut these in too tight because the girth of the trunk is still expanding so you don't want to do anything to manipulate or inhibit that and have any permanent trunk constrictions as the tree grows and, and past this point where you trimmed it. So we'll trim that one and another big important issue is to make sure when there's multi trunks uh, you follow the lead on the leaf because I've done it many times I've trimmed what, what I thought was a brown or yellow frond and then I cut a green one coming in from the other direction of the uh, multi trunk so here's another one you can see somebody trim these and it just aesthetically doesn't look good and you know these have armament so you put your hand in there and this is brown and it matches the trunk you're not going to see it and it's going to stab you so I'm just going to finish the, the cut off here and we'll do this yellow here's a couple brown ones and just put them in a nice stack Okay, we'll go over to this side. Oh, and another important uh, issue I wanted to bring up was the trimming of palms. Sometimes maintenance crews and landscapers will over trim a palm initially so it lessens the frequency and intervals between trimming. Say they, there's a, a, a tree has 40 fronds on it, they'll trim 25 of them leaving 15 so they only have to trim it once a year or once every six months instead of multiple times a year and that's not good because even though some of these fronds may have a little yellow in them they're still very essential to the palm with their food and water conducting tissues to still feed the palm its nutrients to push out new fronds so just just keep that in mind okay so I'll do a few more here and then you just take a look at the pump and you see how this you, you can look at the canopy uh, hands like let me show you here hands on the clock all the a rule of thumb is this would be a completely almost trimmed palm at 12 o'clock you always want just think of hands on the clock nine and three uh, always keep your your silhouette of your palm at nine and three uh, parallel to the ground this would be 10 and 2, 11 and 1, 12, 8 and 4. It just makes the palm look nice, the, the, the silhouette of the canopy, and it's, it's a good, healthy uh, situation for the tree. So, All right, and we'll go over to this uh, Arcanto Phoenix King Palm over here. By the way, this is uh, one of many crown shafted palms that are self-cleaning. What I mean by crown shaft is here's your trunk, your ring scars, and this green neck is the crown shaft uh, which supports the, the canopy and the leaf bases. So as you can see we have, I'm not even going to have to need to use this so let me show you. You don't want to, again, you don't want to force these off but this is a yellow frond with these crown shafted palms when it turns yellow and it's ready to go away it, it'll split here and you can actually, if you leave it untouched for Oh, probably an additional week it'll eventually find its way off but what you want to do is just carefully peel it off and always pull up and away because if you pull down you'll you'll pull some of the fibers down in the permanent trunk and that'll leave a scar but see I didn't even need any of the sharp tools or anything and whoops a daisy there we go and you can see this other one here has already kind of cleaned itself off but it's one good thing about the Arcanto Phoenix King Alexander's they're self-cleaning and then we'll uh, We'll go over here to the Chinese fan. Also, the uh, former leaf bases, or leaf bases from the former fronds and fibers, especially this uh, 
Chinese fan, Livestona chinensis. A lot of people, you know, like their trunks cleaned up. That's absolutely fine. But if you really cannot pull this fiber with your hand, I wouldn't recommend. Now see, I could give it a little acceleration here by using a pruning tool, but you don't want to really pull all these boots up all the way up to here because that's uh, leaving the, the trunk unprotected and it's more susceptible state up here where it's still growing. And then uh, here's our lopping shears, a Chinese fan. Again, you, wanna, you don't want to cut way down in here because you're inhibiting the trunk from maximizing its overall diameter. So I usually cut on these larger trees about four to six inches out and you just give it a nice clean cut like that. Here's another one. And watch out, these have little mini shark's teeth on them, so stand clear when that uh, frond comes down, step back so it doesn't nail you. And reason why this tree has several yellow fronds is because I've recently been transplanted. So it's called transpiration. When it's transplanted, you gotta keep in mind this has been growing in a tree farm for years. So the roots have been pruned and cut, so its natural ground water supply has been cut off. So the size and magnitude of this tree with obviously a fairly small root ball, which is amazing for palms, uh, doesn't have any source of water now that it's been shrink wrapped, balled and burlapped, so we have to water it. So it's gonna naturally shed some of its older fronds to help uh, you know, recycle from the smaller root ball. So many customers and people ask me, they think something's wrong with the tree, but I know this isn't a magnesium or potassium deficiency because it was just recently transplanted. Now, if this had occurred in a residential or commercial planting site uh, where the tree's been planted there three, four, five years, then I would say with the rapid amount of yellow and brown fronds, we would probably have some type of nutritional deficiency. But in this case, it's not because it's been transplanted. So I just want to stress how important that is to make sure people are aware of the difference of frond yellowing from transplanting and frond yellowing from uh, a nutritional deficiency. And then I'll just do this last one. Okay, so we'll go on over here to the uh, Phoenix Sylvestris. I'll get the pole saw. Yes, okay. Uh, this is one of our top selling palms. Uh, many people really like the orange trunk uh, when they come in. And let me tell you about the coloring on this. No, it's not a paint or a stain. It's just uh, the natural genetics of the palm. And I just want to show you on this one, this browning, uh, one person would come in and say, well, I don't want to select that palm. It looks like it's unhealthy or sickly. Not true. This was brought in a couple weeks ago and it is uh, transpiring, meaning because again, like I told you about the Chinese fan palm, the root system has been root pruned in the tree farm and uh, it's shedding some of its fronds to compensate for the, the smaller root ball to supply this beautiful specimen. So we'll trim a few of those off, maybe several of them just to show you again right underneath the spines and then just an upward and downward motion just like that. Uh, so 15 to 20 percent of the canopy on some of them, a few, we don't have any fronds we need to cut but just to compensate but as long as that center and that bud is up you don't have any crown or spear collapse the tree's good to go and uh, I'll tell you if you have a tree purchased and it's uh, perfect with no fronds needing trimmed off more than likely you're gonna have one three five or ten over the course of a month that are gonna do this uh, later on eventually if it doesn't happen here after it's been shipped several weeks prior or after uh, it'll happen in your yard so just just expect that and just trim it off it's just the tree compensating so I just want to stress how important that is and this is called a step cut what they do is, and the reason why this is orange, like I said, is genetics, but in the tree farm, they live, they leave, let's go over to this one here. They leave all the leaf bases on. So when it's cut and shipped to us, it's fresh. Let me show you, this is an older one that's been here several years. You can see our culture, uh, it's been trimmed since it came in from the tree farm. This was the tree farm. 
and then since we've had it, uh, these are my trimmings here and, and probably some others, but uh, these can be eventually removed because you have enough height from where they were diamond cut in the tree farm up to where the new growth is. So the way they do that, they take a reciprocating saw or a sawzall and they saw from the bottom up and you don't want to use a chainsaw. Everybody's first impression is, oh, should I use a chainsaw? Chainsaw, too thick, too big of a heavy duty of a blade, you're going to cut into the trunk and cause a permanent injury. So a reciprocating saw or sawzall that moves back and forth a half an inch wide. Uh, you just kind of saw in from kind of a U-shape up and then this will come down and then you use a uh, X-Acto knife or Stanley razor blade and what they do is they just go in the tree farm and then they just cut all this out here and you can see, see that beautiful orange color like on the specimen behind me? This will all be fresh and orange and it's just like a new fence. I tell people when you get a brand new wood fence it looks beautiful then after three to six months from environmental factors that it's exposed to, rain, humidity, soil, and uh, decomposition of trees and products or whatever, uh, it'll, it'll change. But this can be pressure washed as well as the uh, other one there to the right, but looks bright and fresh when you trim it and that's how they come in in the tree farm. They leave all these bases on and right before they ship them to us they trim them and they're just beautiful orange and just, just a beautiful tree, but that's just uh, a natural color, it's no stain or anything. So I just wanted to point that out. And then let me go over to the queen palm over here and I'll show you those. I can do it one of two ways. I can do it with the lopping shears or the pole saw. Again, this is a recently transplanted palm, so this older lower fronds yellowing and browning is going to be more frequent since it's been transplanted. So again, with these, there's no spines, but you want to go up from about six inches from where it uh, extends out from the trunk and just give it a nice cut. And by the way, with the loppers, you're going to get a nice smooth cut as opposed to the teeth that are on this Corona pole saw because uh, it's going to be a more jagged cut. But unfortunately, the higher trees that I can't reach with the loppers, I'll have to use the pole saw. And then let me go right over here. And I'll, I'll trim one of these taller queens here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So we'll go up to... John, I don't know if it's light enough in here to see it. So we have a flower stalk and a fruit inflorescence and a new fructescence on this queen, if you can notice uh, to my left the flowers have already gone to see fruit and seed and then behind it you can see a new inflorescence that's coming out with the pollen but I'm just tracking down this yellow frond and we're gonna trim it off but that's this is probably about 15-16 feet above ground level so just wanted to show you how I trim it and then sometimes you gotta watch because one frond a newer frond that's above it is right in the angle where your saw is so you might want to walk around and switch to another side where you have more of an open airy space to get that saw in back and forth the blade let's see here we go it's almost there of course this is a little tangled up in here but i can reach it from here but yeah this is a necrotic older leaf so just wanted to pull it off Alrighty.